Hey guys, Mingo here, bringing you my Guild Wars 2 leveling build series, which will feature a video for each of the 9 classes. The reason I'm doing this series is because the vast majority of build videos online seem to be solely focused on endgame meta builds, and I know from my engagement with the Guild Wars community that a lot of you out there want help with some of the more basic elements, so this one is for you guys. In these videos, I'll be going through all of the information you need to make sure your character is as powerful as possible all the way from level 1 to 80. I'll be covering the best weapon types to use for your class, as well as armor stats, runes, utility skills, and specializations. If you've not yet made up your mind which class you want to play, check out the class guide playlist on my channel, where I have a detailed guide on each of the classes to help you make that decision. I'd like to thank you all for your fantastic support I've received on my channel so far, and if you find this content useful, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to be kept up to date on my latest content. You can also follow me on Twitter at Heroic Flamingo, where I'll be posting regular updates as well as doing gem giveaways for you guys. Finally, I just wanted to let you guys know that there are two links in the video description that might interest you. The first one is to sign up for a free Guild Wars 2 account, so if you haven't got an account yet, do give that a click. And the second one is a link to the Guild Wars 2 store page where you can purchase the Path of Fire expansion and get Heart of Thorns with it for no additional cost. All of these things help support the channel and I thoroughly appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so now it's time to look at my leveling build guide for the Thief. So the first thing we're going to have a look at are the weapons that I've chosen for this build as well as looking at the individual weapon skills. Okay, so for our main weapon set, our main damage dealing weapon set, I've gone with the main hand sword and the off hand pistol. So this is a really good combination with a, a lot of damage and a really powerful dual wield skill, which I'll be going into in a second. Um, so I'd highly recommend it for a, uh, a leveling build when you want to be doing you know, as much damage as possible. Um, there are some good alternatives, to be honest, with the thief that you can choose from. Uh, you can use the dagger, which is uh, gives you more mobility, uh, or you can use potentially a main hand pistol as well, which gives you a really good dual skill with the pistol, but obviously then you'd be entirely range. And to be honest, you do want to have some uh, powerful melee abilities as well with the thief. So that's why I've gone with the sword and the pistol, a nice mixture of melee and ranged. And then for my second weapon set, I've got the short bow, um, which we will still be using it's got some good uh, mobility skills condition skills and stuff like that on there um bit of crowd control so yeah that's something we'll potentially be using as well um so these are the uh, choices that we've got so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to go through each of the weapon skills and just sort of give you a demonstration and and talk about when they might be useful um just so you know if you just started the game now and you're just starting to level your thief Obviously, I'd say pick up a sword as soon as you can. You can probably get one from a, uh, a merchant or a weapon merchant or even just on the trading post really cheap for a few copper for a basic one. And then you'll start to unlock these skills. So at level one, you'll have your uh, just your first weapon skill here. But you unlock them pretty quickly. So the second weapon skill you'll unlock at level two, and the third one at level four, the fourth one at level six. And then when you get to level eight, you'll have all five of the weapon skills. And then I'll go into obviously in a second when we look at the other weapon, but when you get to level 10, you'll unlock your weapon swap ability, which allows you to have two weapon sets, so you'll have 10 weapon skills to choose from, and I'm gonna go through all of them now. All right, so the first one is a chain ability, and it's slice, slash, and crippling strike. That bottom one there, Tactical Strike, Stealth Attack, I'll go into that a little bit later when we talk about the profession mechanics. Uh, so the same as with any chain skill, you want to try not to interrupt it because it's quite weighted towards the third and final strike. Um, so do bear that in mind. Um, this will be your auto attack, so you can put this in between skills, like when you're waiting for initiative to come back. And it's pretty high damage um, with good effects, so it, it's not a waste of your time, so it's definitely uh, worth using. So slice is slice your foe, so it's melee range, hits up to three targets and does some damage. And then the second one slash is slash your foe again. Uh, once again, exactly the same bit of damage from melee range. And then the third one is cripple your foe with a final strike. 
So this is going to do a bigger amount of damage. Um, again, to free targets from melee range, it's going to cripple the enemy for two and a quarter seconds, which is going to reduce their movement speed, as well as inflicting weakness, which reduces the endurance regeneration. So, like I said, do let it play out to the third strike, but that is a um, it's a good chain skill, which we'll be utilizing in combat as well. So we can see. Uh, obviously, we can only see one of the skills there, and I'll demonstrate it a bit later in the combat demonstration. Our second ability is Infiltrator's Strike. Uh, so this costs free initiative, and I'll go into more detail in the professional mechanics section, but initiative is this along here. It's a finite resource, which comes back while you're in combat, uh, but obviously using these weapon skills will drain it. Uh, these weapon skills generally don't have cooldowns, so um, you've got to manage it a bit more. So for example, you could spam something, but you'll find that you'll run out of your initiative really quickly. Uh, so it's a bit of a learning curve compared to other classes, especially for new players. Um, so just bear that in mind. Um, so yeah, so Infiltrator Strike costs free initiative and it's Shadow Step to a foe and strike them. Use Shadow Return to Shadow Step back and cure one condition. So there's two parts to this skill and you don't have to use both of them. So the first one, you're going to shadow step to the enemy so you can use it as an opener, a gap closer, something like that. It will do a bit of damage but the main thing is that it will immobilize the enemy for two and a quarter seconds. As well as granting you swiftness uh, and you can do it from 900 range as well. Um, if you then wanted to get back out of combat, you could press uh, your number two again and use infiltrator's return. It costs an additional two initiative. Um, and it means that you return to your original location and you cure one condition. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind. Um, as you can see, boom, there you go. You sort of put it down and I'd, I'd go to the enemy and then I'd press it again and it would return to my original uh, location and cure a condition. So I'd say you probably use that more as an opener, uh, in which case you might not want to use the second one because then obviously you'll be using five initiative in total. Uh, and you want to try and um, keep most of that initiative back for your damage dealing abilities. Now talk about damage dealing abilities. Uh, next up we've got Pistol Whip and this is the uh, this will be your main damage dealing ability of this um, build. That's you know that's easily your most powerful ability. It costs five initiative. Uh, this is a dual wield skill. I'll go into more detail in a bit, but basically when you're wielding um, two weapons with the uh, with the thief your first two skills are defined by your main hand your fourth and fifth skills by your off hand and then your third skill as a combination of your main hand and off hand so if i were to either change my main hand or my off hand this would change this skill to a combination of the two and uh, sword and pistol gives you pistol whip so like I said, cost five initiative and it's pistol whip your foe, stunning them and slash repeatedly with your sword. Uh, so this is really great. So you're going to hit the enemy, literally pistol whip them, um, do an initial amount of damage, stun them for three quarters of a second, which they can't do anything. And then you're going to hit them four times for big damage. You've got to be within melee range to use this and it takes three quarters of a second to, um, to cast it while you're using it as well. Uh, but obviously it will stun the enemy for that period as well. So this is a really good skill as well because um, not only does it do loads of damage, but if you're fighting like one enemy or there's one really powerful enemy, you can use this, not, maybe not constantly, but relatively uh, repeatedly um, so that you can stay alive as well because obviously you're stunning the enemy. So while you're using this, the enemy can't damage you. So you can use this quite a lot. So let me just demonstrate this. So bang and then slash, 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 slash. There you go. So you're going to hit them. That's going to stun them and then you can just do these slashes, going to do a bunch of damage. Use that a couple of times, most people are dead and they haven't done any damage to you either. So it's a really effective part of this build and you're going to want to be using that as much as possible, especially against single uh, target enemies as well. So our fourth skill, uh, which is Headshot, and this is our first skill on the, uh, the pistol. It costs four initiative and it's Daze Your Foe with a Headshot. So it does a bit of damage, you can do it from 900 range, it dazes the enemy for a couple of seconds so they're unable to use skills. Um, so you'd use this like as an interrupt if you wanted to stop enemies from using skills, if you specifically wanted that. Other than that, you know, it's not massive damage, so you're not, you know, you're not going to use this instead of one of your um, damage skills. So obviously you'd only use this as and when you needed it. 
And then our fifth and final skill on this weapon set is a black powder. And this costs six initiative. Oh, let me just demonstrate, sorry. Bomb, just a quick demonstration of number four. Yeah, black powder costs six initiative. And it's fire a black powder shot, blinding your target and nearby foes with smoke. So this is a really effective ability if you're fighting um, a mob of enemies. So obviously a couple of enemies, um, three or four. And what you do is you do a bit of damage. Um, it targets up to five enemies, pulses three times, um, lasts four seconds and a radius of 180 around you. Uh, but the main thing is it blinds enemies. So the next outgoing attack misses. Um, so one method that you can use with this build. So if you're fighting a group of enemies, say three or four enemies, um, one effective method you can use is you can pretty much spam this black powder ability to stop enemies so you're constantly blinding them so they can't hit you uh, and then you and obviously that will use up pretty much all of your initiative because it costs six each time but you do quite a lot of damage with your chain which costs no initiative so potentially you can let your chain play out and in between that you can use bam black powder everyone's missing let your chain play out another one or two times then black powder again, and then you can use this on all the enemies until they're dead, um, which is a pretty effective um, method there of, of killing enemies. So that black powder is a really effective skill, mainly for the fact that it's gonna blind all targets in that 180 radius. So uh, do make sure you utilize that as much as possible and link it up with your um, chain skill there. All right, okay, so let's have a look at the short bow. So this weapon you'll be using less often. Obviously, if you if you need to get out of combat and use a ranged weapon, it's effective for that. It does have some good skills, a bit of uh, crowd control, a bit of getting around, uh, and some good conditions as well. So let's have a look. So our number one skill is Trick Shot, and that's fire an arrow that bounces between nearby foes and inflicts bleeding when striking poisoned enemies. So, um, see, if you've got poison on the enemies, and we'll have a look at some of the other skills that may link in with that, uh, it's going to inflict bleeding on them, it's going to bounce between three enemies. Uh, so, obviously, shooting that, it's going to be bouncing between a few different enemies, so it will be damaging them. So, if you've got a group of enemies, you don't want to get too close to them, just your number one skill is going to damage all of them, so, so that's going to be pretty good. Uh, your number two ability is Cluster Bomb. So this costs three initiative. So fire a cluster bomb at the target area. Detonate in midair for multiple explosions. So this is a um, a good ability to use against groups of enemies. Uh, you could maybe use it as an opener. So if they're sort of all standing still, these enemies together, you can shoot this at them uh, and it's gonna explode. It does have detonate cluster. Um, so what is this going to do you're going to i'll demonstrate it's probably the easiest way of doing it but it's ground targeted so i'm going to aim my cluster bomb i'm going to shoot it and then when it hits the ground it's going to explode and it's going to do damage to everyone in that area it's going to uh, make them all bleed up to five targets in that radius of 240. however i can press it again before it hits the ground to detonate the cluster bomb in mid-air and cause four small uh, explosions which are all going to bleed enemies uh, and it maximum of um three targets per impact so let's just demonstrate this so if i was to do that and then press it in midair you see it will shoot down so that's good for maximizing the damage also if you go to put it on enemies and then by the time it's going to go to them they've actually ran past that spot you can dem uh, you can detonate in midair so that it damages them while they're coming towards you that could be pretty effective so that's quite good um to drop down on groups of enemies our number three is disabling shot, which costs four initiative. So leap away from your foe while firing a crippling shot. So this is a good one um, for you know getting away from the enemies. So if you're if you're quite low on health, you need to get away. It's going to do some damage. It's going to cripple the enemy. So uh, it takes them longer to get to you. You're also going to evade for half a second um, while leaping back. So it's pretty good. So for example, if you're fighting a melee enemy and they're doing a lot of damage to you, and you need to get out. Swap over to your short bow and go bam there you go so a few different things one you're going to cripple them so it takes them longer to get to you so you can whack out a bunch of your other ranged abilities but also um, you're leaping back to get some distance between you and them and while you're leaping back you're evading for half a second as well so you're not actually going to be taking any damage either so that can be a really effective skill uh, for getting out of combat and then fourth here we have choking gas 
So this costs four initiative. So fire an arrow that dazes enemies on impact and poisons the target area. So this is another ground target ability. You can do it for 900 range. Uh, lays down a radius of 240. Uh, the field lasts for three seconds, hits up to five targets. So it's going to daze enemies for a second and then all of the people in the area are going to get poisoned. And obviously we can link it with our number one skill uh, which inflicts bleeding on poisoned enemies. So let's say you've got a group of enemies here, you might want to drop poison on their head bam and then you can use your number one to do bleeding so you're, you're sticking stacks of bleeding on top of the stacks of poison so extra condition damage there so, so that can be effective and obviously you're dazing them as well for a second uh, so that's uh, it's a pretty good skill as well and then number five here which costs six initiative is infiltrators arrow so fire an arrow and shadow step to the target area blinding nearby foes uh, so this is a pretty good one for getting around. Um, so yeah, you shadow step to the uh, target area and it blinds enemies. Um, so the next outgoing attack misses. So you could use this uh, to enter combat. So potentially um, you might have poisoned your enemies. You might have dropped a bomb on your enemies. Uh, and then you might be bleeding them with that as well. And then potentially you'll use your number five to get into combat. Uh, you've blinded them and then you can switch to here and whack them with your pistol whip to do a bunch of damage uh, And that could be an effective way of getting into combat and doing as much damage as possible uh, So this is pretty good even if you just need to get around like maybe you need to get away from an enemy or something uh, You can just whack that out whenever so <laughs> It's a really fun ability to use as well. So use it wisely obviously it costs six initiatives So you don't really want to be spamming it around the place because then you'll have no initiative for all of your damage abilities but it's a, uh, a pretty cool skill there to use as well. All right, so that's all of our weapon abilities for this uh, leveling build. So next thing we're gonna have a, a look at are the healing, utility, and elite skills. All right, so now for the healing, utility, and elite skills for this build. So starting with the healing skill, we've got Signet of Malice. Uh, so this has a 15 second cooldown and obviously being a signet we've got a few on here um, you should probably already know what it is but a signet has both a passive ability uh, which it does constantly and then an active ability which it does when you actually activate uh, the skill so the passive on this is that it heals you when you attack so this is pretty cool so it's going to sit here on my uh, on my bar here whenever i attack an enemy i'm going to be a healing myself uh, for 132 obviously that would depend on your health um, so that's pretty cool and obviously you're going to be doing lots of quick attacks with the thief so you're going to, it's going to help keep you alive especially as you've not got a massive health pool here um, the good thing is as well um, you know, you've got your active ability so you can do a nice big chunk heal as and when you need it so if your health does drop quite considerably then you can always activate it boom and then get a nice big heal but always be aware with any signet as you can see while it's on this 15 second cooldown i'm no longer getting that passive ability so i'm actually going to be weaker i'm going to have less sustain for that 15 second period obviously 15 seconds is pretty quick for a um healing skill uh recharge anyway which is good uh, so as long as you if you don't need it if you don't need a chunk kill then just let it sit there and um just get health over time but if you do get a, you know hit for some big damage big damage and you need to heal yourself then just whack out that number six and you'll get that heal and yeah with a nice quick cooldown 15 seconds later you can use it again if you need it so i do like um to use healing skills with quite low cooldowns from time to time because uh, i think it's quite an effective way of doing it and i do like that passive as well so with our utility skills uh, the first one i've got here is smoke screen so you'll notice that the utility skills um, don't actually cost initiative, which is pretty good. It's only your weapon skills. So these do work on cooldown. So don't sleep on these. You can utilize them. So smoke screen. It's got a 25 second cooldown. And it's create a smoke screen that blocks missiles and blinds foes. Uh, so we've got quite a few things on this, which is going to be uh, blinded enemies, which is good. Because uh, we want to stop enemies from hitting you as much as possible. So, um, yeah, so what it's going to do is it's going to place this down on a radius of 240 around you. It's going to block missiles, so any projectiles coming in will be blocked. It lasts for 7 seconds, which is quite a long time. It can affect up to 5 targets around you with blindness. So, once again, 
you've got a bunch of enemies around you, bam, use this, and then you can use your skills to damage them. As you can see. And um, yeah, and then they'll be blinded so the next attack misses. So we want, obviously, we want to do as much damage as quickly as possible to the enemies while, uh, dot, you know, them missing as many attacks as possible. And this will help us to do that. So you whack this out on cooldown when you're fighting groups of enemies. Uh, there's no reason why not to, as it doesn't cost any initiative. Uh, and that will, you know, help you to take less damage. So that's a really cool skill. And here we've got a couple of signets. So we've got Assassin Signet. Uh, which the passive is that it grants you increased power and then the active ability is that power is massively increased for a short duration so generally ones like this you just leave it on your bar there's not really any reason to activate it it's just going to mean that you have more base power so you're doing more damage uh, while this uh, is just sitting on your bar if you really need a short burst of um, like a five second burst of, of a large power increase then by all means utilize it as such uh, but then obviously you're going to miss it off your bar then for 20 seconds. So you're actually going to be weaker for 20 seconds. So obviously bear that in mind. And then also we've got Signet of Agility, which has a 30 second cooldown. Uh, and the passive is it grants increased precision. So this means that your critical hit chance will be increased just by having this on your bar. And then if you activate it, it refills your endurance and cleanses conditions from nearby allies. So once again... As long as you do, if you don't need it, just leave it on your bar and you're just going to have a passive just by having it on there. You're going to have increased critical chance. But if you really do need some condition cleanse and uh, to refill your endurance so you can roll around a bit more. As demonstrated. Boom, there you go, it's come back. Then you can utilize it, but obviously you'll have 30 seconds without that critical hit chance. So it's something to bear in mind. Uh, just to clarify with these skills uh, you'll be unlocking your healing skill from level one so as soon as you start you'll have that your first utility skill you'll unlock at level 11 your second one at level 15 uh, your third one here at level 19 and then the elite skill we're about to look at that you won't actually unlock until you're level 31 so obviously you might not need to worry about that right now but obviously it's nice to get an overview of what you're going to be aiming towards so yeah with your elite skill uh, we've gone with a basilisk venom so this has a 40 second cooldown um, and it lasts for 30 seconds and it means your attacks turn foes to stone uh, so stone duration is a second and a half um, hit can up to five targets and like i said lasts for 30 seconds in a radius of 240 around you so this is a really effective skill uh, you kind of want to use this whenever you're fighting groups of enemies. Uh, it's good for crowd control because it's going to be turning enemies to stone. Um, uh, it's just an effective skill because what it does, it doesn't require you to like channel and do all this stuff. It just adds to your attacks. As a thief, you're going to be hitting a lot of enemies. And this just buffs those hits, basically. So let's just demonstrate this. So if I use that, boom, there you go. So for 30 seconds, your attacks turn foes to stone. So we'll be utilizing... All of our attacks on the enemy so pretty much it lasts for 30 seconds and has a 40 second cooldown so you can just utilize this pretty much all the time there's no reason why not it's just going to give you uh it's going to help with a bit of crowd control it's going to mean you'll be turning the enemies to stone they're going to be doing less damage to you uh which is really important um so i'd say just utilize that as much as you can as you can see just ended now and then there's only 10 seconds left on the cooldown so just whack this out pretty much on cooldown whenever you're in combat and that's going to help you um, do even more damage to your enemies. So, so that's really good. Obviously, as always, there's plenty of other skills to choose from for you to look at. A couple of different signets if you need, um, you know, different things, uh, different effects on you, depending on what you need. Lots more activate abilities here. Um, ones that apply poison and stuff to enemies. Good for condition build, so not really going to focus on that here. We've gone mainly with a, a bit of a hands-off approach for these skills. Just a couple of signets we'll leave there. This we'll just use once every 40 seconds. Um, this one we'll use in combat as well. And then obviously this, even the healing has got a passive. And we'll only use that when we're desperate. The idea really is that because we're working off initiative here, um, our, our skills here don't actually have any cooldown. So we want to utilize all of our damage skills here as much as possible. 
uh, without having to worry too much about these. So free free signets you don't really have to touch unless you really need them. Uh, and then that you just have to press once every 40 seconds that once every 25 or so seconds when you're in combat uh, so you can really just focus on doing as much damage as possible with your weapon skills which is sort of the uh, uh, and obviously you, your movement as well with the thief rolling around a lot a lot of dodging and things like that so uh, that's that you know that's intentional with this build you may think that you know the utility skills aren't very exciting and maybe you could use some more but the more time you spend faffing around with your utility skills activating abilities over here the less time you're going to spend with your high damage weapon abilities um, and you're not going to be fully utilizing all of your initiatives so that's sort of the premise of this build and that's why it's set up how it is obviously you can change those skills as much as you want if you want to have it a little bit more hands-on with the utilities some more active abilities there uh, but this is just what I've found to work and I think it could be quite good for for you know leveling players new players as well which I'm sort of aiming this towards because you, it gives you less to worry about you can leave these here know that they're making you more powerful and just focus on learning um, and using all of your weapon skills uh, so that's sort of where we're going with this build okay so that's everything for the healing utility and elite skills so the next thing we're going to do is have a look at the weapon and armor stats okay so now it's time to look at the weapon and armor stats for this build obviously this won't matter too much um you know when you're just starting to level and you're quite uh, low level because there won't be too many stats on your gear uh, but i just want to give you a quick rundown of what you're going to do with those stats and what you want to prioritize as you're leveling so obviously as you start the game um, you're basically just going to get basic armor and weapons that don't have any stats on and that's absolutely fine um, obviously after a short amount of time you'll start to see stats appear in that gear and at first it will just have one stat so it'll be plus two power or two vitality or something like that uh, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to focus on as much power as possible because that's going to give you more damage which means you're going to be killing enemies quicker and leveling quicker which is the whole point of this build uh, so before I start listing out all these different stats and stuff, just to give you a little rundown. Power increases your attack damage. Toughness increases your armor. Um, vitality increases your maximum health. Precision increases your critical hit chance. And Frosty increases your critical hit damage. And that's really all we need for this build. So like I said, you'll be using the... Uh, power to start with so when you get one stat just focus on power if it hasn't got power on it just throw it away that's what you want uh, obviously um, when you get a little bit further into the game you'll start to get more stats appear in your gear you'll get a second stat alongside it um, at that point you're probably going to want to start adding in it depends what you need really so potentially if you you know if you're doing plenty of damage and you're not you're not worrying about dying and things like that then you can add in some precision which is going to mean you're going to have a higher critical hit chance so effectively more damage on top of that but you know if you are find, finding it struggling a little bit you might want to add vitality as your second stat uh, so that you can get a little bit more health because um you know the thief can have quite low health so it is something that you might want to take into consideration or you know maybe some extra toughness if you want your armor to increase uh, and then eventually you're going to get free stat gear which is what you mostly use you know when you get to level 80 but you'll have it below that um and, and that's when you've got to make a choice like what sort of gear you're going to want to go with um for this build i've actually gone with berserker stats which are like the ultimate damage dealing stats which are power precision and ferocity so that means you're getting a maximum boost to damage as well as a, a big boost to critical hit chance and critical hit damage which obviously go hand in hand to basically mean you do as much damage as possible uh, so i've done that because i find that you know if you if you play this build well and you use all of your blindness and smoke screens and all that sort of stuff you can stop yourself from taking too much damage so those things are actually more important in your defense than just sticking some vitality on there i'd find that probably be a little bit lazy you, you could manage with these just attacking stats um, if you manage your skills correctly. Um, but obviously, as always, you, you could mix it up. You could use Marauder stats, which adds a bit of vitality and gives you more health. That's always a good shout without losing too much damage. Uh, but as you can see, I've got Power Precision Frosty on literally everything, I think. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, everything. Uh, so I'm doing the maximum amount of damage I possibly can in this build 
you can do that and then play it a bit if you find you're dying a lot you, you're getting squished you know yeah you might want to add in some toughness you might want to add in some vitality like for example on some of my builds i might use berserker stats down here and then over here on my jewelry i might use um stats that give you a little bit more health or uh, toughness or something like that um but it does depend i mean i'm happy to use berserker stats with this build but that's just something to to bear in mind in terms of my armor runes i'm using superior rune of the pack which gives me increased power so more damage extra boon duration and then a big boost to precision at the end which gives me a higher crit chance crit chance is really important um, with this build and with the thief in general you're gonna be hitting a lot hitting quite quickly so having that higher critical chance just means you're gonna be doing more damage with those hits so it's really important uh, so that's a good rune anything similar which focuses on damage and um, crit chance is obviously recommended anything like that will do on my weapons I've got the sigil of strength which means I gain might for 10 seconds upon critically hitting a foe obviously I'm going to be critically hitting a lot so this just means I'm going to be stacking might on top of myself and might just gives you more power so as you can see everything I'm doing is trying to build as much damage as possible and just kill the enemies as quickly as possible so I don't have to worry too much about the fact that I've got low health and low armor and then here I've got superior sigil force to go with the sigil of strength that's just your normal sort of like power build uh, match up there gives you an extra five percent damage and then i've got a couple of different ones here on my short bow for when you switch to it superior sigil of energy which means you gain 50 percent of your endurance when you swap to this weapon in combat uh, so that's because you're probably going to swap this weapon you know when you want to go in a bit more defensive mode and get away from the enemy so it's good to get a little endurance boost and then bloodlust is gain a charge of plus 10 power each time you kill a foe uh, five charges if you kill an enemy player so once again just stacking up your power as well so yeah you can see i've got it on all of here yeah power precision frosty like i said it's going to be the main um aim with this build if you can if you can survive with those stats then you're going to be doing as much damage as possible so happy days to be honest okay so that is everything for the weapon and armor stats for this build uh, so the next thing i'm going to have a look at are the traits and specializations okay so now we're going to have a look at the specializations i've chosen for this build as well as the individual traits within them okay so um here we've got all three of our specialization slots and each class has five core specializations to choose from um don't you know don't be worried if you haven't got all of these options yet because you do unlock them as you go along and some of them are quite high level uh, so the first specialization slot uh, you'll unlock at level 21 uh, the second one at level 45 and you won't unlock your third specialization slot until level 71 so you might not have to worry about that for quite a while but it's quite good to have a look at what you're going to be aiming towards so our first specialization slot um, we have dedicated to deadly arts so as soon as you hit level 21 you're going to want to start unlocking the deadly arts um, uh, trait path um, and obviously we're going to have a look now at all the different ones you've got so um, just by having this on here the passives that we have for the deadly arts specialization are serpent's touch which is stealing inflicts poison while in the down state your attacks apply poison uh, so this is obviously quite good for condition damage um, so whenever you use your f1 ability which we're going to go into more detail soon uh, when i go through the profession mechanics uh, you're going to inflict poison and then yeah, you know, when you're in a down state as well so you inflict more poison which means you'll hopefully be able to stay alive a little bit better if you go into a down state uh, your next one is lotus poison which is weaken targets when you poison them so obviously links in with that you're inflicting poison you're inflicting weakness as well and then here you've got exposed weakness so deal increased strike damage to your target for each unique condition on them so an extra two percent damage um, for each condition on them so obviously if you're stacking quite a few then that's gonna be pretty good uh, in terms of our choices here we've gone with top bottom bottom and that's dagger training which may be a bit of a weird one because we're not actually using a dagger but there's not that many viable options here so it's gain bonus power which is increased when wielding a dagger 
So you are. This is just by choosing this, you're going to give you a bit, a uh, bit of extra power, which is good, especially at a low level, just meaning you'll do more damage. So that's why we've got that as part of the build, especially when you're leveling up. And then if you do choose to use a dagger, which is a very viable option as well, then you get some additional power as well. Next up, we have revealed training. So gain power, then gain extra power while you are revealed. So just by having this on there, yeah, you get another extra 80 power as well. So stacking that up and then um, when you're revealed, uh, which I'll go through a bit more in a bit, uh, then you'll get even more power. And then finally, we've got Executioner, which is deal increased damage, uh, increased strike damage when your target is below the, uh, the health threshold. So while they're below 50% health, you do 20% extra damage. So that's the main reason why we've got this um, specialization tree on here because that is a massive increase to your damage that you definitely want to take advantage of okay so when you get to level 45 you're going to be unlocking your second specialization slot here and we're going to go with critical strikes and the passives on that are keen observer which is critical hit chance is increased while your health is above the threshold uh, so as long as your health is above 90 percent uh, then you're going to have an extra 10% critical chance increase. So that's really good. Uh, next, you've got Unrelenting Strikes, which is gain fury when you strike an enemy whose health is below the threshold. So you gain fury whenever you hit an enemy below 90% health. So that means you're going to be getting fury like constantly, which is really awesome. And then you've got Ferocious Strikes. So gain increased critical uh, damage against foes whose health is above the threshold. So enemies whose health is above 50%, you're going to get an extra 10% damage. As you can see, all the things which we've got here are going to just be making this build even more powerful. In terms of the choices, we've gone bottom, middle, bottom, which gives us twin fangs, which is deal increased critical damage while your health is above the threshold. Gain bonus critical hit chance when hitting a foe from behind or the side. Uh, so while your health is above 90%, uh, you're going to do an extra 7% critical damage uh, and then you do an extra 7% critical hit chance if you hit an enemy from behind or the side so just bear that in mind when you're in combat positioning can be important and rolling around to hit someone from the back or the side can result in extra damage so just puts a little bit more emphasis on that next up we've got practice tolerance so gain ferocity based on your precision so gain 10% of your uh, precision as ferocity so it just means that um, it's going to increase your critical hit damage which is good and then third one here we've got invigorating precision so you are healed for a percentage of outgoing critical hit damage this healing is increased while you're under the effects of fury all right so this is a really good trait here this i mean you, i cannot understand uh, sorry understate how much uh, extra sustain this has given you. Uh, so you're healed for 10% of outgoing critical hit damage. Bear in mind, we've designed this build to hit as many critical hits as possible. So 10% uh, of that is gonna come back uh, to you as healing. And that's gonna be increased. Um, the healing is increased to 20% while you're under the effects of fury. And obviously we're looking at these passives along here you're going to have fury on you a lot of the time so this just means all of that damage you're putting all those critical hits you're going to be healing yourself so this is absolutely fantastic however there is an option here no quarter landing a critical hit while under the effects of fury increase the duration of fury gain increased ferocity while under the effects of fury this will give you a really nice boost to damage but this gives you a massive boost to your sustain. So this is a choice you have to make here. Because I've gone with the armor armor and weapon stats of just with the Berserker stats to do as much damage as possible, I've chosen this one to keep me alive in combat. I think it's a, it's a good trade-off. But if you honestly feel like you don't need that, no quarter is going to give you, you know, a decent amount more damage. So you could, that's a viable option as well. So just bear in mind there's a big choice there between those two. Okay, so when you get to level 71, you'll be able to unlock your third specialization. And we've dedicated that to trickery. So our passives on trickery are 
Kleptomaniac, so stealing gives you initiative, so an extra two initiative back when you use your F1 ability. Preparedness, so increases maximum initiative by three, gain increased expertise. Um, so yeah, an extra three initiative along here, so normally it'd be three less, so that's good. And lead attacks, so increases all damage dealt per initiative spent, still gains reduced recharge time. So maximum damage increase of 15% um, and recharge of steel reduced by 15% uh, as well. And for the choices we've gone with bottom, top, middle, which gives us thrill of the crime. So when you steal, you and all nearby allies gain fury, might and swiftness for 10 seconds. And so this is a good one actually. So this is going to encourage us to use that F1 ability and uh, just means us and up to five nearby allies within a radius of 360 you're going to get a bunch of buffs as well and then uh here uh, next one we've got bountiful theft so stealing grants you and all nearby allies vigor you rip boons from your target and grant them to nearby allies so vigor is going to give us more endurance regen and we're going to steal up to three uh boons and give them to allies up to five allies within a radius of 240 and finally, we've got Sleight of Hand. So stealing also dazes the target, reduces the recharge of steel. So uh, stealing dazes the target for one second and reduces the recharge and the reduction, uh, sorry, the recharge of stealing is reduced by 20% as well. So that is all of the, the traits we've chosen uh, for this build. Obviously, they're a really important part of the build. They're what make you really powerful. So don't just stick them, um, you know, randomly wherever. Um, having them set out in a particular way like this or maybe in a different way you prefer really will help maximize the damage output of your build, which is obviously what we're, we're going for with this. Uh, so yeah, that's everything for the traits and specializations. So the next thing we're gonna have a look at is the profession mechanics. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the profession mechanics for the Thief. And the Thief is actually quite a unique class and has quite a few things to talk about. Uh, so obviously something we've already touched on is the initiative bar along here. Uh, initiative replaces cooldowns for your weapon skills. Uh, it's pretty cool, uh, but it can have a bit of a learning curve uh, for uh, new players. Obviously it means that instead of being you know completely ruled by cooldowns you know on many other classes you basically just use all of your weapon skills on cooldown you can pretty much just spam whenever they're available uh, whereas this you know you could spam whatever skill you wanted to but you'd soon run out of initiative so you have to give it more thought as to which skills you actually want to prioritize uh, so it does make it a little bit more interesting and just means um you know you just maybe need to put that a little bit more thought in uh, when learning your weapon skills um, so it does make it a little bit harder to play and some people maybe avoid it because of that but I think once you get used to it um, you'll, you'll probably think it's a, it's a pretty good way of doing it as well a um, couple more things to talk about as well uh, so there are stealth attacks you may have noticed um, on here it's not actually part of the um, the skill normally that's not like a fourth part of the chain or something the, the one at the bottom tactical strike is a stealth attack that means that this is what that ability will do uh, if you use it uh, while you're in stealth obviously stealth can be a big thing for the thief this build that we've put together here um, you know uh, stealth isn't a big part of it it's more of a run straight in and smash the hell out of them till they're dead sort of build which uh, so it, the stealth attack maybe isn't as important but I'll quickly just demonstrate and just tell you what they are so if you are stealthed and you use your number one ability you'll use tactical strike uh, which is blind your foe by bashing them with your sword hilt daze them instead if you attack from behind applies vulnerability so obviously you kind of want to try and do this from behind as well because it will daze the enemy for a couple of seconds uh, it also blinds them and puts vulnerability on them so it's a pretty effective skill so if you ever find yourself stealthed be it by by someone in your party skill or one of your skills then that's a pretty good uh, one to use make sure you use it from behind and then your um, your stealth attack on the short bow is surprise shot, which is shoot an arrow that bleeds and immobilizes your foe. Uh, so as you can see, yeah, it's going to do uh, bleed damage. It's going to immobilize them for a couple of seconds and do some damage. So that's a pretty effective skill as well. 
Um, so, and one other thing as well, which I did speak about, is the um, dual wield skills. Uh, so it's just something to bear in mind when choosing your weapon. Uh, so for example, um, normally this third weapon skill, you would say would be defined by my main hand weapon, so my sword. But actually, if I was to change my offhand pistol to say a dagger, then this f number three skill would change to a completely different skill. That's because it's defined by a mixture of your main hand and offhand weapon. Uh, so pistol whip is a mixture of a sword and pistol um, and it utilizes both of them in the skill. They're often um, the most powerful weapon skill in your bar so it is quite important to think about what weapons you want to put together um, as, as to what dual wield skill gives you. Dual pistols has a really good um, dual wield skill so that's an option. Uh, if it's unload or something like that, you know, it's basically just rapid fire with your pistols and do a bunch of damage. Uh, so that's really cool. But but yeah, it's worth having a look at and just remember that it isn't defined um, by your um, main hand weapon completely like it is on all the other classes. So um, it's just something to bear in mind. But then obviously on like the short bow, which is a dual wield, uh, sorry, not a dual wield, a, a two handed weapon, um, then your number three skill is just defined by that weapon as normal. And then one thing I haven't really touched on yet, I mentioned it a couple of times but I haven't gone into detail, is the still skill. This is your F1 ability. Um, and you, you'll notice your F2 is blank as well, which is, you might think is a bit odd. But let me just speak about this. So still, this has a 20 and a half second cooldown. And it's shadow step to your foe and still from them. Um, it has a range of 1200. Um, you would have noticed when we were going through our um, specializations and our traits, there was quite a few which buffed this. So you can see all those things in blue there are buffs that are coming from um, all the traits we've got. So if you don't have all those things on there, that's because you haven't chosen the same traits. So what still does is, like the main thing is, so let, before I go into all of the extra things we've got via the, the traits, basically what it is... It, you shadow step to the enemy, so it's a good way of getting into combat. It doesn't cost you any initiative, just has a cooldown. And then depending on what type of enemy you use it against, you'll be stealing an item, and that will then give you an F2 ability. It's a bit of a strange one. Uh, so, for example, um, if you used it against a mower bird or something like that, it might give you an F2 ability, which like you've stolen some feathers, and you can use your F2 to like throw the feathers in their face and blind them. So it's a bit of a difficult one to plan against to tell you how to use it because obviously it depends what uh, sort of enemy you're using it against. Um, so I won't go into too much detail about whether to use your F2 a lot um, because it does depend on what you're using. But the F1 in general, I would say you pretty much want to use this on cooldown because we've buffed it quite a lot. So you're going to be stealing a few boons from enemies. You're going to be gaining an extra two initiative so you can use it to get a couple of initiative back as well. Uh, poisoning the enemy, dazing the enemy, and you can be putting fury, might, swiftness, and vigor on yourself and um, up to five allied targets uh, nearby as well. So there's a bunch of positives to using it. Um, so potentially you could use it to go into combat or during combat if you want to move around. So for example, I'm fighting someone here. Uh, maybe I want to go and attack this person over here. I just make sure I highlight them. Press F1. Obviously they're not an enemy. But it would it would teleport me to them but as you can see might fury swiftness got all of these buffs on myself they'll be on allies as well which means we're going to be doing more damage um and being able to move around quicker so it, it, it's really effective to be able to use that uh, whenever you can it's only got a 20 second cooldown so use it whenever you can to to do that and obviously it depends on the enemy you can whack out your f2 as well which will have an extra effect depending on the type of enemy but as long as you use your f1 that's the main thing and you can use that from quite far away so you can use it from from 1200 range uh, so you can use that to enter combat or move from one enemy to another so that's something you're going to want to be mixing in with all of your skills as well so just something to bear in mind so i think that's all of the main profession mechanics for the thief obviously as you can see it's quite a unique um class especially that it's got a finite resource instead of cooldowns. That's like the main thing to get used to. I mean, I struggle myself, you know, most of the uh, classes I main, like Mesma, Necromancer and stuff like that, they all based off cooldowns. So, you know, can struggle a little bit. Um, the Revenant is actually the only other class that uses a finite resource as well, has energy. 
So potentially if you play as a Revenant, then moving over to a Thief um, might be something that won't be so crazy. But if you've been just playing ones with cooldowns, it will take some getting used to. Uh, but, you know, potentially you can have really good results. Um, and I, I think this build is pretty good um, for, for a leveling build. And obviously when you get to AE plus and everything like that, there'll be tons of great builds that you can use. Uh, lots of people like using the Thief in PvP as well. Uh, obviously not something we're going into here. Um, but you know it's all stuff to consider and it is a really good class it's just one that potentially you have to get used to okay so that's everything for the profession mechanics so what i'm going to do now is I'm going to do a quick build summary for you guys all right so now i'm going to give you a quick build summary uh for this leveling guide um i'm just going to go through everything we've been through just quick just to summarize everything that we've spoken about so for our weapons we went with the main hand sword and the offhand pistol and our second weapon set is the short bow um, i said that the sword and pistol is your main damage dealing weapon set uh, your number three skill pistol whip that is going to be one that you're going to want to spam on single targets it's going to uh, help keep you alive because you can stun the enemy but it's going to do a bunch of damage as well um, your number five is really good when you're fighting groups of enemies because it's going to blind all the enemies and you can basically just spam that while um, utilizing your number one chain ability to do as much damage as possible. Um, your number two is good shadow stepping ability for potentially entering combat and number four dazes enemies uh, which you can potentially use as and when. Short bow is pretty good. Uh, range, more of a defensive weapon. You don't, you know, if you want to get away from your enemy, you can potentially use this. Uh, your number one's a, a pretty good one there. Your number two um, inflicts bleeding, does a lot, of, uh, does decent amount of damage to two enemies. Number four is good for poisoning enemies, groups of enemies. Uh, number five, you can use to move around. It's like a shadow stepping ability. And then number three is good for getting away from enemies and get some. Uh, maybe switch to this if you're struggling in combat. It will get some. It will cripple the enemy and make some uh, distance between the two of you. Uh, so the healing skill we've got signet of malice uh, so that's just going to heal you as you go along and you're going to activate it only when you need it smoke screen is good because it also uh, inflicts blindness so we're going to stop the enemies from attacking you as much as possible which is important for this build because we've not got a lot of health and then a couple of signets here assassin signet and signet of agility which grants you increased power and precision just by keeping it there so you don't need to activate them unless you're desperate and then the elite basilisk venom we want to use as much as possible because it turns enemies to stone uh, which just means they'll be doing less damage to you which is great uh, for the weapon and armor stats i went with power precision frost teeth for everything do as much damage as physically possible but obviously you may need some vitality or toughness if you struggle uh, traits and specializations uh, so i went with deadly arts critical strikes trickery uh, with this setup here as you can see um, obviously you might want to change them but it's just something to bear in mind i did make a note that no quarter is potentially better for doing damage but invigorating precision is really good for sustain so that's a bit of a uh, decision you have to make there and then i uh, just spoke briefly about the profession mechanics so obviously using your steel ability as much as possible to put buffs on you and allies as well as maintain you know managing your initiative so not spamming too many weapon skills and keeping your initiative up as much as possible as well as choosing a good combination of weapons to get your dual wield skill as well so that is everything for this build hopefully you found it really useful um obviously what i'm going to do now is i'm going to leave you with a combat demonstration where i'm just going to go through uh, i'm just basically just going to show you me using this in combat obviously not necessarily uh you may have a better way of using it but um using all the things we've gone through here so uh like and subscribe to be kept up to date um thanks for watching and i will see you later Sweet and
Let's tear it down. <laughs> 